Hey, I'm Sarah, this is Abby, and welcome to A Swool Unlimited. If you're new here, I'm a scuba instructor and I moved into my van in 2021 after losing my dive shop in Indonesia due to shutdowns. I've been on the road diving around the US, Canada, and Mexico for the last two years, teaching on YouTube along the way. Before we get into today's video, I want to let you know that the Baja Dive Expedition is completely sold out. However, if you'd like to join me for a dive trip in 2024, there are spots available for the Komodo Dive Expedition. If you want to see the details for that trip and see if it's right for you, I've linked it in the description below and the pinned comment. All right, let's get into the video. There are a few changes you need to make to your equipment in order to side mount dive with a dry suit. Most importantly, you need to add an extra one of these guys. So that's a low pressure quick connect and that is going to go on your right first stage. That way you have inflator hoses for both your dry suit and your wing. We'll talk about configuration in a minute. On your harness, oh this is still wet, oh that just spilled all over me. Awesome! Okay, <laughs> moving right along. You'll need this kind of drop D-ring at the back of your harness. You probably already have them because that's where you clip off your extra gear or if you have a pouch, that's where the pouch clips on. But you'll specifically want those for dry suit diving if you want to dive with steel tanks. Now this one isn't a requirement per se, but I highly recommend getting very large bolt snaps. I happen to like these X-Deep bolt snaps because of the shape. They're easier to grab, but any kind of large bolt snap will be really helpful. And finally, when you're dry suit diving, you are just larger, so you will need to adjust your harness to give you some space. You'll also have to adjust that fit for different types of undergarments that you're wearing. Some harnesses are easier to adjust than others, but regardless, I recommend using a marker or something to note where all your placement is if you're diving dry suit in caves in Mexico for part of the year, but then you're diving in super cold water in Canada for the other part. You can easily swap back and forth and use the undergarments that are appropriate for your diving. Depending on the types of tanks you use, you'll also need to adjust the tank band position and where your clip is. The goal is to always have your gear streamlined and to make that horizontal trim really, really easy for you. This will come with trial and error I recommend if you're making adjustments, you do one change at a time, then record yourself or get a buddy to record you just to see where your placement is. And that will really help. It may be frustrating and you may want to go in and just change everything because you think you know, but I recommend slowing down. It'll be a lot smoother. At least that's been my experience. There are two camps for setting up side mount with a dry suit. There's the camp that has the dry suit inflator connected to the left tank, and then there's the camp that has it connected to the right tank. I personally am in the left tank crew. When I go for a single tank side mount dive, I always take my left tank, so I want that connected to my dry suit. Why? Because consistency is really important to me, and also by nature of design, I can still inflate my wing orally, right? I can't orally inflate my dry suit. So I want the dry suit connected to that primary tank. If you learned side mount while wearing a wetsuit, you probably had your wing connected to your left tank. This means if you want the configuration I'm describing, you have to actually swap the position of the inflator hose and your dump valve on your wing. Let me show you. This, oh God, it's really heavy. And we'll talk about why it's heavy in a little bit. So this is my razor harness. And when I was diving with a wetsuit, I had this connected over here. That way my left tank inflator hose was connected to my wing. I just swapped those two. That means that my dry suit is connected to my left tank and my wing is connected to my right tank. Getting proper dry suit undergarments was a game changer for my comfort and warmth. Mind you, I also had to increase the amount of weight that I was taking on dives, but that's generally the case. If you are warmer, then you're probably gonna need more weight unless you're using battery operated undergarments. 
okay? That's an entirely different game and I'm not on any kind of budget to try those out yet. So maybe you'll see them on the channel in the future, but for now we're sticking with old school method. <laughs> I got by for about a year using thrifted workout clothes and wool thermals, but dry suit undergarments are on another level. These pieces are designed to keep you warm while maintaining a thin profile, which means air doesn't get trapped as easily on a sense. Choosing between steel and aluminum tanks plus different sizes of those tanks makes another impact on the amount of weight you have to carry on your harness. This could be important to you if the reason that you chose to dive side mount is because of spinal injuries. Taking big steel tanks instead of aluminum tanks means less weight on your harness that you physically have to carry. Then you can get help getting your steel tanks into the water. Now these steel tanks are still quite cumbersome until you get fully under the water, but this is one of the reasons why side mount is so adaptable to people with different needs. I dive with aluminum 80s and I always have in side mount. When you go diving in the tropics, most of the tanks are gonna be aluminum 80s. And that's just what I was used to because my career has been primarily in warm water places. This past year, I've had the opportunity to try steel 100s and steel 50s. I have to say, I am a creature of habit. <laughs> I really am comfortable with how aluminum tanks feel Feel, the way that their buoyancy changes throughout the dive and maintaining my trim. I find steel 100s to just be too big and heavy for me. Personal preference, to me that's not my option. The steel 50s are quite cool. I met a handful of divers that have these steel 50s and they're very cute. <laughs> they're very small. If I weren't living in such a small space, I would be all for that. However, <laughs> in order to do two dives in like a remote place somewhere, I would need four of those tanks to be able to do like a normal, you know, hour plus dive. <sighs> It's not practical for me. If I had a house, plenty of room, budget isn't an issue, I would definitely go with steel 50s. So I recommend those if you wanna look into them. For me and my circumstances, it doesn't make any sense, especially because I can't just use a steel 50 as my primary single tank back mount tank. I mean, I could, but it would be a short dive. With living in a van, the majority of the items that I have serve multiple purposes. And so that is the reason why I'm I'm just sticking with my aluminum 80s. All right, that is the video. Thanks for watching. If you have more tips and resources, please share them in the comments. If you want to directly support my channel and what I do here, check out my Patreon community or think about joining one of my expeditions. Okay, love you, bye. Please explain back thinning. <laughs> so, you make the taco. Make the taco. You present the taco. Present the make taco. Make sure you don't spill it. You present the taco, <laughs> and then you bless the taco. You bless the taco. What a beautiful taco. You should have seen me <laughs> when I was doing my navigation dive with my student. Uh-oh. It looked great. Fins down. We're just gonna follow Ooh. Down. down. Yeah? Out. I even felt the pulling back while I was... Yeah. Heck yeah. 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 Yeah.